Now, one of the most confusing things in NMR are the terms upfield, downfield, diamagnetic, paramagnetic, shielded, deshielded, high frequency, low frequency. You've really got to get your head around. To start with, we, we're working on a scale that runs in reverse. We've got PPM scale that runs from the right to left. And if you've seen the uh, PPM scale tutorial, you know what I mean. It's, it's quite historical that we actually use the scale anyway. Let's start off with the terms upfield and downfield. These are the ones actually I have the most difficulty trying to remember because I know I need to reverse it in my head, but I still get confused. So downfield is towards the higher end of the PPM scale and upfield is towards the lower end of the PPM scale. Now this is quite historic as well. Many, many years ago, back in the days, um, 20 years ago I actually started doing NMR in uh, undergraduate laboratories where we had a 60 megahertz continuous wave NMR machine and basically it's like the old fashioned NMR, uh, infrared sorry, where it just sweeps across at different field strengths so let's pretend to do that now it sweeps across until it finds uh, a nucleus that brings about resonance so there's one and then there's another one there's a triplet and so on and so on and so on and all these resonances would have um, some kind of um, capacitor associated with them. So you get the, let me just see if we can do this as well. You'd have the integration, which would be measured by some capacitor. And that would give you the amount of hydrogen's presence as well. But it sweeps across from downfield to upfield. And that's where those terms come from, because the field strength is supposedly changing. And it does change, basically, in the continuous wave machines. In the modern machines, we have a sta static magnetic environment. And what changes is the RF pulse. Uh, basically, we irradiate our molecule or system or NMR tube or whatever with a broadband pulse. And that brings everything present to resonance all at once. And we just listen to that ringing. And the ringing continues for those um, species that are actually in resonance. And we can detect them as NMR signals. So that's upfield and downfield. There's, Like I say, it's just historic, but you'll find this in many research papers. Not just NMR research papers. You'll find these in um, a lot of synthetic organic chemists. Uh, research papers because it's so colloquial to use the terms upfield and downfield that it's, it's just like mainstream talk really and it can be confusing and certainly I find it confusing when people say even now I have to second guess or second think or what a double think I think it's called in uh, Orwellian language um, just to think about what it is actually um, this means so there are terms that are used, but they're counterintuitive, in my opinion. But my opinion doesn't count, anyway. So let's have a look at what a chemical shift means in terms of um, shielding and deshielding. So I'll leave the terms upfield and downfield on the screen. So basically, in this region, in the lower regions between 0 and 5, these are considered to be shielded. So the um, electrons surrounding the nucleus here are quite dense. The electron density, sorry, is quite dense around the nucleus. So these are typical of um, things like CH3s. You know, these will be around here. And then as the electron density is taken away from the hydrogen, so something else, I'll put an X there, is, is, is near the carbon, and it pulls the electron density towards itself, withdrawing the electron density away from these hydrogens then it slowly shifts up there so it's got a massive effect from electronegativity so electronegativity or electronegative elements have an influence on the chemical shift of of the uh, proton nucleus on this ppm scale here so shielded nuclei tend to be around this region okay deshielded around this region, really deep shielded down there. You can have shielded 
nuclei around here. And this kind of region here is for things that are um, overlapping. So I'm going to draw another molecule here, but imagine this is a protein or something, and it folds round on itself, and this part of the molecule is on top of that one, and you get some shielding. So that kind of thing can go on in the negative regions. It's quite rare in small molecule chemistry, but it's not rare at all in protein NMR, where you get some overlap from these different amino acids, if you will. Okay, so you do use the negative scale as well. Okay, so that's shielding and de-shielding. So de-shielded uh, nuclei are the downfield and the shielded are the upfield. And let's think about the frequency. Remember we did this in PPM scale a little bit. So this is the lower frequency rev uh, resonances and this will be the higher frequency resonances. And if you remember from the PPM scale, we set this as zero hertz. And we use TMS for that, tetramethylsilane as an internal standard. And depending on the magnetic field strength, let's say we have a 500 megahertz NMR. Then every part per million, there's a million hertz, is in a 500 megahertz NMR is worth 500 hertz. Okay, so 1 ppm is 500 hertz, 2 ppm is 1000 hertz, 1500, 2000, 2500, and so on and so on. So it goes from low frequency to the high frequency. So I think basically the take on message is Downfield means de-shielded, also means higher frequency. Upfield means shielded and also means lower frequency as well. I'll put a few examples of this up on, on Epistemio um, for the tutorial sessions. And if you have any comments, just leave them in the comment section below. Bye for now.